Let's do hands-on with AWS Organization Service. Let's go to the AWS Organizations console. AWS Organizations enable central management for multiple AWS accounts. This service enables you to manage and consolidate all your AWS accounts centrally. The first thing to notice is that this is a global service that is not associated with any AWS region. You need at least two AWS accounts for this hands-on. I have two accounts for this exercise. I have one master account and one child account. The master account will be the managed account. Let's go ahead and create an AWS organization for this hands-on by clicking Create Organization from AWS Organization Console from your master account. When the organization is created, you should see it very similar to what I have right now on AWS Organization's master account. Means the root organizational unit and a management account. Let's add a second AWS account to this organization. I'm going to click on Add an AWS account. Now here we have two options. Create an AWS account, which is the default setting. For this, you will have to enter the AWS account name, email address, and IAN role, which is pre-populated, and click Create Account. Or you can invite an existing account. Here you can enter the email address associated with that AWS account, or the account ID associated with that AWS account. Let me use this option. I'll enter the email address associated with the child account for this hands-on. You can add another account if you have one. For this hands-on, I'll only add one AWS account. You can include a message if you would like to. You can skip tags as this is optional. Now let me click on Send Invitation. As you can notice, the message is displayed at the top. An invitation to join your AWS organization has been sent. If you would like to view all pending invitations, you can view all pending invitations if you click on Invitations. Right now, one invitation is pending. It has an expiration date, which is about two weeks. Now let's go to the other AWS account and let me click on the invitation link. As you can see that the invitation is displayed here. It says, the organization with the following details invites your AWS account to become a member of the organization. This organization has all features enabled and can assume full control of your account. What it means once you accept the invitation, this account will become part of the master account. It has all features enabled and can assume full control of your account. I'll accept the invitation. Now this account has become part of the AWS organization. Your organization has all features enabled. You can apply policies that can configure and limit what the accounts in the organization can do. The account may leave the organization. Now let's come to the AWS organization. If I click on AWS accounts, you can notice that within the organization, I have root and two AWS accounts. The main feature of AWS organizations is centrally organizing and managing many accounts from one account, which is called managed accounts. In other words, you can organize various accounts using organizational units, which are also called OUs. Let's play with this concept. Let's create a couple of organizational units, OUs. First, create dev OU. For that, select root, go to actions, and click on create new. Let's name it dev. Also, create test and prod OUs. As you can notice, I have three OUs under my AWS organization. Now let's add two more OUs, engineering and finance OUs under prod OU. Select prod, go to actions and add OU and click on create new. As you can notice, we have engineering and finance OUs under prod OU. So you can have OUs under OU. The reason is organizing OUs under organization unit makes applying service control policies very flexible as we will see. Now let's add the child AWS account to the finance OU. For this, I can move this account under finance OU. Select the account, go to actions and click on move. As you can see that the child account has become part of Finance OU. For the management account, it's good practice to have it under the root. Now I need to apply service control policy to restrict what the child account can do. For that, let's click on the policies on the left side. We have four types of policies available and currently, all of them are disabled. Let's enable the service control policies, as this policy will help us restrict what the child account can do. 
So click on the Service Control Policies and click on Enable Service Control Policies. As you can see now, Service Control Policies have been enabled. Currently showing full AWS Access AWS Manage Policy. Now if you go to Policies, you can notice that Service Control Policies have been enabled. You can also enable Backup Policies. Backup policies you can apply to deploy organization-wide backup plans to help ensure compliance across your organization's accounts. Also, you can enable tag policies. Tag policies help you standardize tags on all tagged resources across your organization. But in this exercise, we will be using service control policy. Now service control policies are enabled. Let's define a service control policy. Right now, we have one service control policy has been created which was created when we enabled service control policies. This policy provides full AWS access. Full AWS access allows all the accounts to access all AWS resources. We can create a new policy. For example, let's create a policy that will deny access to S3. Let's name it, deny S3 access. Here for effect, deny for actions, select S3 and all actions. For resources, Let's add star. For SID, add deny S3 access. Let me click on create policy. As you can see now, the deny S3 access policy and the full AWS access service policy are also displayed here. If the deny S3 access policy is attached to whichever accounts, the account will be denied access to S3. The beauty is that we are doing it centrally instead of going to the account and adding that deny policy. This makes applying and removing policies to multiple accounts very flexible and efficient. We will not have to go to each account and manage policies. Imagine a large organization that has many AWS accounts. Organizations make it much easy to manage multiple AWS accounts centrally in terms of billing and policy management, which is essentially about resource access and who can access what. Let's go to the accounts. Click on Root. Click on the Policies tab. You can notice that one policy, full AWS access, is attached to the root. What it means all its child organization units and accounts under them will have full control of the AWS resources. If you go to the child AWS account, you can see that there are four policies assigned because the policies are inherited from root, from prod, and finance OU as the child AWS account is under Finance OU. That's why we see three inherited policies. Now let's go to the Finance and attach the Deny S3 access policy we created. Click on Attach. And here, select the Deny S3 access policy and click on Attach Policy. If I click on the Policies tab, you can notice that the Deny S3 access policy is attached directly to the Finance OU. So what it means is that any OU and accounts under finance organization unit will inherit the deny S3 access policy. How to test it if got access S3 or not? Let's test it, as you can notice that I'm not able to access S3. You can realize that AWS organization service is very powerful. Once you have set up OUs and added AWS accounts, then you can centrally manage many aspects of other AWS accounts from one place, such as billing, apply service control policies, to restrict access to what other accounts can do in a very flexible way because of the inheritance nature of the AWS organization service.